Yo, ladies and gentlemen, the international break is over. And we are now going to be going back to football. Arsenal have a huge game versus Manchester City this upcoming weekend. And let's take a look at the international break and if anybody got injured or if everyone's just good to go. So let's let's find out what we got. Let, let's find out what we got. Because I think this international break, to me, has been a success for Arsenal. And let me tell you why. I'm going to show you guys in a second the breakdown of, of how everything happened during this international break and who's available off the back of it. So first, Mikel Arteta gave these guys one plan and one plan only. Come back fully fit. And some of these guys, they've done that. For example, William Saliba. William Saliba had two games. William Saliba had two games for France where he was a he was used for 90 minutes versus Chile and he was an unused substitute versus Germany. And also, William Saliba and Didier Deschamps do not get on. Didier Deschamps came out with some statements talking about uh, William Saliba, and I'm gonna just I'm just gonna read to you guys what he, what Didier Deschamps said about Saliba. I have it I have it here on my phone, just uh, just so I can show you guys. Actually, you know what? I might bring it on the screen also. He said um, Didier Deschamps on Saliba. He's having a good season, but he does things that I don't like so much. For France, he has limited game time, but when he plays, he is necessary necessarily gone well. The heritage does not favor him at the moment, but he is here. He said. Uh, uh, he said. Papa has been uh, uh, has had game time. Perhaps William Saliba had uh, ha has had less with certain players, making sure to to preserve because it is. It can be so. What a little blockage in the. This guy is just waffling. Some uh, and and don't have any concerns with game time with Saliba. He had less time, so doesn't allow him to be very calm. Basically, he's just talking shit. The guy's chatting shit, and I'm just gonna show you guys what what I mean. Because in my opinion, Didier Deschamps is a clown, and he and he, and he doesn't deserve he doesn't deserve a, a defender like William Saliba. The way that he the way that he talks about Saliba, saying heritage is not on his side, bloody bloody blah, 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 chatting all this shit about Saliba. Personally, to me, I just find it very weird that you have such a quality player. Everyone can see how good of a player he is, but you take him as as oh, what he's doing at Arsenal is irrelevant when he's when he's with the French national team. He doesn't he doesn't have the he's having a good season, but he doesn't uh, he doesn't he does things that he doesn't like. And he gets limited game time. And this line right here really pissed me off. The heritage doesn't favor him. So you can pause the video right there and read the rest of this. I'm going to have to keep it moving, guys. So let's go to the next uh, player. The next player is, of course, uh, uh, what do you call it? Trussard. Trussard played 60 minutes versus England and 45 minutes uh, versus Ireland. He didn't really get a good opportunity to, uh, to what do you call it, show his best, in my opinion because he, he was playing limited game time versus Ireland, but against England, he played a good amount of minutes and he looked good. But overall, it is what it is. As long as he comes back healthy, fit, and available, that's all that matters to me. And uh, next, Zinchenko. Zinchenko has stamped his ticket to the Euros, uh, Euro 2020. He had a playoff final. He beat Ireland. Then he beat Bosnia. And overall, they've now gone to the Euros. And big up Zinchenko, captaining the side also, playing 26 minutes in the opening game and playing 76 minutes in the second game. Just goes to show you that they kind of they rested him for the final game. And also, they didn't want to, to pick up that second yellow to get sent off. Also, surprisingly, Martin Odegaard actually played, ladies and gentlemen. He played versus uh, Slovenia and uh, I think that's Czech Republic. Yes. So, he played 79 minutes for Slovenia and 86 minutes in pointless friendlies, but you know what the good thing is? He did not get injured, thankfully. So we, we gotta we gotta be happy that he didn't get injured, and he's still ready and available for that Man City game. Let's go to the next one. Big up Jakub Kabior played the most minutes out of any player that Arsenal has sent on this international break. He played 90 minutes versus Estonia, 120 minute versus Wales, and overall. He leaves this uh, this international break a winner. He stamped his ticket to Euro 2024 and deserves everything that he's getting. He is an absolute baller. And he's showing lately that he is that. David Rea. Although David Rea saved Arsenal recently in the penalty shootout 
For Spain, he is nowhere near the number one spot yet. He might be number two, but he, he's not. He's nowhere near number one. He played only 45 minutes versus Colombia. And for Brazil, in a 3-3 game, he was on the bench and was an unused substitute. Of course, you don't see goalkeepers get substituted often, but he got substituted at halftime. Then you also have Declan Rice. Declan Rice was the captain for England in the game versus Belgium. And of course, he played 90 minutes in both games. What is Southgate doing? I have no idea. But Declan Rice clearly wanted to play to get his 50th cap for England. So you know what? If he wants to play, as long as he comes back fit and available, good for him. Keeps his, keeps his energy ready for that game against City. And he had a good game versus Brazil, as uh, even though the rest of the team was shocking. And versus Belgium, steady Eddie. That's what he always is. Seven or eight out of ten. Seven or six out of ten. Seven out of tens every game. Now Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz absolutely balled out versus France, ladies and gentlemen. Kai Havertz absolutely balled out. Got a goal. Was integral to almost everything that was being set up uh, by the uh, by the German national team. He's he's earned his place back into the team. And this German kit looks pretty fire too. Versus Netherlands, I didn't really watch that game, but he did play 73 minutes. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Arsenal's lucky that we didn't get any injuries. As you can see here, I know I didn't miss anybody or anybody in the under 21s I didn't mention. But yeah, those are the players uh, that were that were on international duty. And luckily, all of them are back, ready, fit, and available. And Mikel Arteta is going to be very, very happy to find that those players are all fit, all available for the upcoming game versus Manchester City. And you know what? There was an interesting moment. Uh, there's an interesting moment where people just uh, talk. Uh, we're talking about a couple of days ago, and I think it was what was what was the moment that everyone was talking about? It was the fact that it was the fact that John Stones was asked something. Uh, uh, no, it was Declan Rice was uh, Declan Rice went up to John Stones, and John Stones basically said to him, uh, he he asked him about the game, and and he basically mugged him off and said, oh, it didn't really mug him off, but he kind of just said like. This was this was something that everyone was talking about. So let me show you guys. They're saying, "Oh, um, Declan Rice first day back in the England duty. I saw John Stones and he didn't uh, he didn't know uh, Man City were playing Arsenal next. Now, in my opinion, I think he's lying. I think he definitely knew Arsenal were, were his next opponent. But if he didn't, imagine if that was Ben White who said that <laughs> the criticism and and slander he would have got. But yeah, long story short." John Stones tried to say, oh, I didn't know we were playing you next. And people are saying this is elite mentality. He doesn't rate Arsenal, blah, blah, blah. But to me, it's just, it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, the, the, man just, the man is just chatting shit. And then, yeah, I think that is pretty much it. Is there anything else that I wanted to show you guys before we move on? Is there anything else that I want to show you guys? Oh, yeah, the Euros, the Euros 2024 draw is fully out and complete. These are the four teams. And we'll talk about the Euros when we get closer to it, but we will be doing Euros coverage also. But yeah, that's it for today on this on this international update. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys want more of these videos whenever we do international breaks. I can give you guys updates on everything going around with Arsenal. And yeah, I'm out of here, people. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, and check out our title sponsor. I forgot to say that. Love for the love, people. And leave a comment down below where you're watching from. If you got into this point of the video, you're an absolute legend. Hit the like, and I already know you're subscribed.